Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM's plant performance is deteriorating at a time when coal stocks are low, plant maintenance is scheduled to rise, and the use of diesel plants is increasing. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss whether the threat of load shedding has returned. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the current problem with ESCOM's plant performance? Well, the problem is that there's a, a coincidence of factors. One is that there's a high level of planned summer maintenance. We're in the summer maintenance season. Westcom takes a lot of plants out for uh, repairs and maintenance. This is a good thing. We want the plant to be operating uh, at, at optimal levels and therefore maintenance is very important. But it's now associated with high levels of unplanned uh, outages and breakdowns across the fleet. Um, and these have been peaking in recent uh, uh, times. I think we've had up to over 10,000 megawatts out for unplanned or unscheduled um, events. And uh, this is also compounded by the fact that there's a shortage of coal stocks across the system. So 10 of the uh, 15 power stations are below the regulated demand or stipulated amount of uh, 20 days of, of stocks. And it's even more acute at some of the power stations. About five have less than 10 days of stock. And the rebuilding of those stocks seems to be taking longer than initially anticipated when we first got wind of the fact that the Eskom stocks were dwindling. Uh, interventions were made, tenders were made, short-term procurement actions were taken. But the rebuilding of these stocks, apart from obviously Madupi, which is sitting on lots of uh, coal stock, uh, because of the late and the delayed uh, ramp up of that power station. But across the fleet and in Pumalanga, there is this, uh, the, these low stock level. And uh, this is also a problem as we enter the wet season in Pumalanga, um, being a summer rainfall area. Uh, we've known in the past, or th there's been indications in the past, with, uh, when, they are, when it is wet in Pumalanga and rains are heavy and the forecast for next year, early next year, is for heavy rains in Pumalanga. Coal handling becomes a problem, and that is really generally the time traditionally that South Africa has entered into load, load shedding, uh, and the system, it seems, is vulnerable. Could South Africa be entering another period of rotational power cuts? I think it's uh, hard to say for sure, certain, but I think the, um, the performance on unplanned outages is, is really a, a big concern at the moment. And uh, as I say, the, the, the if you compound that with the shortage of coal stocks and then the, the wet coal issue that's been a, per a perennial problem in the past, I think we, we're definitely entering a system of, uh, that is a period of vulnerability. And we are already uh, using a lot more diesel um, uh, over the last few uh, weeks and months. Uh, the use of the open cycle gas turbines, which we know is very expensive, and they there are, are there to take us through the peak periods and they are performing that role. And obviously ESKIM has interruptible contracts with a number of uh, large energy intensive users. And it's not clear whether they're starting to draw on those mo uh, more regularly, but I think that's in, in the back pocket. But generally, the system is, is much more constrained than it should be, given that we have these high levels of unplanned outages. Is there a genuine prospect of the energy availability factor at the coal plants recovering to 80%? I think that's a key question. You know, that is what is built in and baked in to the integrated resource plan. So we're assuming that uh, the, the Eskom fleet, coal-fired fleet, which is uh, mature and aging, is going to return to an energy availability EAF of 80%. And that sort of is the sort of baseline that we work the plans on for system adequacy in the, in the, over the next five years, as well as for what we, we build in terms of new capacity to add to the system. In terms of system adequacy, the medium uh, term system outlook, which was published in late October by Eskom, is not very, um, not very good, doesn't make for great reading, in the sense that even under very modest demand growth, I know we're not seeing any demand growth at the moment, but even under modest demand growth of 0.64%, and then a sort of more, uh, a higher uh, sort of demand growth of, uh, of closer to 2%, you know, if we don't get our EAF back to 75% type levels, and we're not at that level at the moment, I think we're closer to the 70% level, although we did, as a, over the year in 2017, perform at around 78%. So if we don't get back stably to 75%, there's going to be adequacy problems. 
um, uh, and that's over, over both, if it's at 72% or below, that's ac across both the low demand and the moderate demand type scenarios. And obviously South Africa is on this investment drive. We're looking at putting in uh, some of these investments. I mean, so some of them mooted, for instance, a zinc refinery and smelter in the Northern Cape. These are energy intensive type operations. So even though we haven't had seen uh, demand over the last uh, period or over the last decade, you know, if we do start getting um, our ducks in a row economically and we become more attractive, there is going to be a rise in demand. And uh, Eskom's fleet operating at the 70 to 75 percent band is going to put us in a, in a, a difficult position. So if we factor in a lower EAF, which is maybe what we need to start doing, then we need to look at relook at our uh, integrated resource plan and say, do we not bring in some of this new capacity earlier? And if we do that, there's going to be implications for the price and the tariff. And we're entering into the tariff rounds. Uh, the uh, Eskom has now um, sub made its submission for the next, four, uh, next three years. There's going to be a lot of backlash towards that. But I think we have to have a, a proper conversation around what is a, an appropriate tariff, given that uh, Eskom's installed capacity is possibly not going to perform at levels that we're going to, uh, that we've expected or have factored in, and therefore more new build is possibly going to be needed earlier. That's going to have implications for all of us. And uh, I suppose the big picture that we have to look at is Eskom's the sustainability as a vertically integrated monopoly business. Uh, with the changes that are taking place in the uh, electricity environment, not only here but internationally, whether that is fit for the future. So there are a lot of balls in the air, but I think this issue of the energy availability factor, we need to have an honest look at that and whether we can really sweat these assets at 80% as is, as, as is um, expected, as is factored in, or whether we need to look at it uh, quite differently. And I think the outcomes, uh, uh, both in the models and what we have to do in terms of procurement changes dramatically uh, if we do that. So there are a lot of issues um, that need to be dealt with and there are a lot of decisions. And I think we need some real uh, firm interventions from the shareholder uh, as well as government in terms of what is the policy environment going to look like? Are we going to have a vertical separation of Eskom? If we're going to do that, how are we going to manage that transition? And I, I think. Uh, uh, the, the sooner we make those decisions, the sooner we can start getting our head around how to keep the system stable, keep the lights on as we transition. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.